Hello everybody, this is that one serious Pikachu, also known as Rainile, and uh, today I got something very special as with the new patch notes, 3.15, on League of Legends, we all know that the tankiest of the tanks are pretty much the game right now. We all know that Renekton, Nasus, Shivana, Olaf, and of course Dr. Mundo are kind of the game right now, as they really dominate the entire meta with their exceptionally tankiness, regeneration and actually damage output without even building that much damage. Now I just found something a couple of days ago when doing some customs, just testing some stuff out, that AP Varus, either in mid lane or support, although I prefer mid lane, can really, really put an end to this and really defeat this meta. Now. This might sound strange, but let's just get into it right now. Okay, so as you guys can see here is that there's only two skills of him that really apply to AP Varus, and that is his Blighted Cleaver and Chain of Corruption. Now, Blighted Cleaver um, pretty much puts up with the fact that um, it does more magic damage with each auto, with each auto attack as well as an extra 0.25 AP bonus ratio. So that means that um, with one fourth of your AP will actually bring more magic damage. Now, I uh, calculated this with a build, so it says that it does plus, plus 26 and then plus 136, right? Uh, but that's with my build. So just think of the 26 right now. And also it does 5% with each auto attack. As you guys know, is that Blighted Cleaver can have three stacks on one target. So when you have 5% on each target three times, that's 15%. Plus 10%, well, nearly 11% per stack. That is nearly 33% of someone's max health that you're gonna do when you trigger the pass, like you trigger the passive of Blighted Cleaver. Now. I think you guys all know what Blighted Cleaver does. Basically, you get some auto attacks off, let us say just three auto attacks, and then another ability, for example, the Q or the W, I mean the E of Ferris, will detonate Blight, dealing magic damage. And that will do some magic damage as well as the target's maximum health in percentage. Now, this is capped against minions, but that doesn't really matter at this point. It's really about the tanks, because you will remove about 33% of someone's health instantly. It doesn't matter if he's the squishiest assassin or the most tankiest of all the tanks. It will deal that much percentage of damage. However, this is not calculated in with all the MR and magic penetration. This is just pure stats right now. So, same with the ult. The ult is basically plus one AP ratio. So, the ult will deal 350 magic damage base and plus 544 because of your AP with my build. Now this will depend of course on all the MRs and magic penetration and of course if you want to change your build that will also change it a little bit, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less, depends on how you want to build it. Now this is also a lot of damage to the squishies so and also this expands as in if you hit one target and the other targets stay in your area it will actually um, corrupt to the other targets and it will deal the same amount of damage and root them for the same amount of time. Also, what really is useful is that the E of Varus, which I actually didn't point out here on my uh, epic <laughs> paint uh, used thingy there, um, is that the E from Varus, which is the Hail of Arrows, actually applies Grievous Wounds, which actually reduces healing effects by 50%. Now this is mostly useful with Dr. Mundo, but this also applies to Shivana, Renekton and stuff, who usually have a bit of lifesteal in their build, as well as some health regen. Now we're going to continue with the build that I would do and how it would really work. Alright, so as you can see here, I would go for a typical mix between attack speed and AP, as well as a lot of magic penetration. Now. Keep this in mind, is that um, the Sorcerer's Shoes you're gonna get first probably, then the Nash's Toot, then you can either go for Rabadons, which I would go for first, as you really need that AP, then either a Hurricane, or you could take a 
a Zephyr, but I really recommend taking Hurricane simply because you're not that much useful with a Zephyr. And with a Hurricane, you're, um, it applies on hit effects, for example your W. So you could hit three people with your W, then you shoot your ult at one person, and when it spreads, it will also put the debuff on them and thus detonate the passive stacks of Blight. Now, this is quite important because it will deal also about 33% of the damage to everyone, but like to everyone. So, with my build, you're gonna get plus 15% magic penetration with the sorcery shoes, plus 50% attack speed and 60 AP because of Nash's 2, plus 20% AP, uh, plus 120 AP, not percentage, 70% attack speed because of Hurricane. Then you're gonna get 100, 120 AP and 10% cooldown reduction because of your Deadfire Grasp. And with your Voice Staff, you're gonna get another 70 AP. Now keep in mind, this is without the passives. For example, Nash's 2 will actually give you 20% um, cooldown reduction, but it's in the passive. Same with um, Rabidon's Death Cap, it's gonna give you a 30% AP boost on your full AP. Now, all these items have passives and I'm not gonna go over them because you probably know what they do and I don't really need to explain it to them but in my build you're gonna have a total of 544 AP you're gonna have an attack speed of 1.916 you're gonna have 30% cooldown reduction uh, this is also with rooms and master reach which I will show you later and also with a magic penetration of 39% which which, which will go first and then another uh, base 21 magic penetration, which pretty much will just remove the MR of the enemies without just really putting a percentage in it, just the base of it. Now, I would take Flash and Ignite because you're probably going to play in mid lane. You could play as a support, but I've tried it as support and it really doesn't work out. You really got to wait until you're 6. And even then, most, like, most supports will really outclass you. Even Lulu and Alistar and such, they're not that popular but are getting quite popular right now because of the new, the new meta. They're still gonna outclass you, so Varus support is really not that viable, especially in high elo. This really won't work because I usually play in low elo, so this works simply because it's low elo. But in higher elo, which I've also tested it with some friends, this isn't gonna work as well unless people are just playing for fun and not really caring. But if they're tryharding, for example, in ranked, this ain't gonna be as successful. However, in mid lane, if you're really good with Varus and used with this build, you will become successful after a while. Now I'm just gonna show you the runes and masteries real quick. All right, so the runes and masteries that I have, first of the runes, don't mind the uh, old icons. I just took them from a uh, mastery maker site thingy. And I also had to change the numbers of some uh, things simply because, well, things have changed by, by season four. So it get, with um, I used magic penetration quints and marks which give you a flat 13.86 magic penetration. The yellows, which are seals, are gonna put just into armor just to take less harassment. And the glyphs are gonna be just flat AP, which are gonna give 10.71. Now this is not that much, but this is of course runes, it won't give you a huge amount. But the magic penetration is really important on Varus, as well, it's pretty much as far as you're gonna go, because all the magic, you want to have as much magic penetration as you want to have it to be true damage, pretty much, as close as it can be. Because the tanks will usually have a lot of MR, so this is really important. Now with the masteries, I go with the traditional 2109 masteries. Um, you could put in 2190 uh, and then taking points into recovery and into veterans health and stuff. However, I like to put in my points into attack speed in double-edged sword and then pretty much go the AP way, a spell with, uh, I think it's called Blade Weaving, that uh, if you do three auto attacks, your next spell will do 3% extra damage. Now this is just extra damage that really applies to it, so that's why I took it, because it's rather useful. Otherwise it's just the basic AP um, uh, trees. Um, and in Utility Tree, I put my points into Movement, which is, of course, always going to be useful, and more mana regen because Ephyrus is quite mana hungry and just into the cookie mastery simply because well cookies are awesome all right so now we're gonna go to the little next thing which is pretty much gonna sum up what we did with our build all right so with my build you can see that you have 
plus 136 on your Blighted Cleaver per auto attack, as well as the maximum damage that you will deal if it gets um, detonated, is with one, with one stack it's gonna have 5% plus 10.9, and if you have 3 stacks on someone, you'll deal 15% plus 30 to 32.7% of the target's max health. Now, this is in percentage, so this will basically remove about 50% of Mundo's health, for example, or Shivana, Olaf, or anyone. Now, considering you can do... This is not even taking into account that you're doing the base damage of your skills, just like... If you do free auto attacks and then do your ult, you're gonna deal massive amounts of damage, probably removing about 70 to 75 percent of the enemy's health. Um, and it, it might actually one-shot someone if it is a squishy target, such as, for example, Oriana or any AP mid, for example, like Ziggs, which is also very popular right now. And it also do tons of damage to the support and the jungler, and of course the AD carry if you would reach him. And uh, keep this in mind because I really want to try this out. So this is basically a call out to every League of Legends player to try this out. Also, I would like to thank the League of Legends wiki for uh, well giving the information. You can uh, find the info at leagueoflegends.wikia.com/wiki/varus. This is where I got my information. I edited it a little bit so uh, so it would apply to my own build, and then you would really see what the damage is. Now, you gotta know is that Varus is really weak in the early game as AP, as his base damage is non-existent because you level your W first, then your E simply because of more base damage and mobility uh, and utility it brings, and then only your Q as last, as you only need one point in it to pretty much detonate your passive of your W. Because your Q base damage is actually not that high, it just scales really well with AD, which you don't really have. So it's really only used for detonating, uh, but Chain of Correction can actually be useful as it slows, and um, it also detonates. And I think it's more useful if you put the cooldown on it. So also keep in mind that you have 30% cooldown reduction, so you will be using your skills a lot more than usual, so you gotta keep that in mind. And I think this is pretty much gonna be the end of the video. So I'd like to thank everyone right now for watching my video, and uh, I hope you, you will give this a try. Just try in a normal game to get AP Varus in mid lane or support, depending where you get. And please tell me in the comment section below how it went, because I think this was really a meta-changing thing, because tanks are the way to go right now, and Varus completely annihilates tanks right now. So if tanks get annihilated, what are they going to do? I mean, there is no protection anymore, and the AD carry is going to be free to go. Now you could use AP Varus in bot lane as the AD carry role, however then you are pretty much weak because you gotta remember you don't have lifesteal, you're pretty much an AP mage right now. So keep this in mind, so I would really like you guys to try this out for yourself on whatever elo. If you're bronze, try it. If you're diamond, try it. I mean, I wanna see how it goes on every elo and we can maybe bring this into the meta because I think this has real big potential. As uh, with the new patch notes, um, this is gonna work perfectly. Now, tanks are gonna get nerfed uh, next patch with the Sunfire and the Spirit of Resistance getting nerfed, but uh, this will probably still keep into account that. It will probably still be a menace. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please give a rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.